up? It's me, Asia, with the spill. Uh, it is Sunday. Beautiful, sunny, bright day in Barbados. Sundays are the best days in Barbados to me. Like, it's a slow day, you know, you drink your little tea. You don't really gotta move too much. Nobody's working, except me. I'm always working. But, um, this is the spill on me. I figured if you guys are going to learn about my business, you should probably learn about me. Because the business is basically, I'm the root of it, so I should introduce myself formally. So, this is A-A-M, all about me. That's what my mother used to say. My name is Asia Adele Mares. I'm from Richmond, Virginia, RVA, Rich Town. It's the South. I don't care what nobody say. Y'all talk about oh, the Richmond. It's the South. The Confederacy, despite how crooked and wicked it was, Richmond was the capital. Okay, so let's get that out the way right there. Uh, I'm a Sag. November 26th, and I'm 26. So I'm very much a Sagittarius. I'm, I'm bold, bright. Um, I speak my mind. Um, and I go for my dreams, you know. Nicki Minaj, Jay-Z, Taylor Swift, Tina Turner, and I got the same birthday. All very much Sagges. Um, So I'm proud. Oh, and Lauren London, of course. That's my girl. So yes. Um, that's my zodiac. I'm an artist. Um, I paint. Um, I, I will show you guys one of my. Uh, I'll show you guys my my famous painting that I finished. But I'm actually working on the next piece. So let me show you. This is my. Um, she represents strength. Uh, my grandmother, who's also a Sag, loves peacocks. So I, I love peacocks. And I'm actually working on a, another piece with Sweet Tooth. So it's going to be a lot of people in it. It's going to be awesome. Um, so, yeah. I'm also a writer. Uh, I'm, writing a, I'm writing a novel. It's called The Rabbit Hole because that was my nickname growing up. Um, my dad nicknamed me Rabbit at the age of two because he said I was always hopping around. Like I just like to hop. So that was my little name. Um, I haven't heard. My husband calls me Rabbit sometimes when he wants to be cute. But um, that is a nickname that I hold very dear to my heart. Um, so... My parents actually passed away. It's been four years now, I think. I lost count. Don't really think about it. It's um, it's just like it's like living with a a scar forever, like a wound, you know. So. I have moved to Barbados for a couple of reasons, and that's that's why I want to have make this video. I want to get down to why I moved here, why I live here, why, why on earth did I do this this to myself? And it's because number one reason is my husband. Um, we got married in 2020. And then we were apart seven months for COVID. And I was just like, you know what? After the, the shutdown was over, we were like, man, fuck this. Let's be together, for real. And he thought it was a crazy idea. I thought it was a crazy idea. But I had traveled back and forth so many times that it made sense. Um, so I've been living here since October 2020. Um, my adjustment period's pretty much over. When I first got here officially, I I had a hard time kind of finding my place. 
uh, I was very confused about what I would be doing, where I would work. Um, I even, um, Sweet Tooth actually started because when I got here, um, being a cosmetologist in, in the States, I thought I could get a job in a salon here. But um, I had gotten a job, they let me work there, but the problem was, I think, that the American tourists were like, I guess, asking for my phone number and stuff. So I thought, maybe they thought like, oh no, she, she not about to take our clientele or whatever. So I, they told me I needed to have my citizenship to work here and I didn't have it. So I kind of got rejected. And that put me in like a dark place a little bit because I, I, I didn't know what I would do for work. And I thought about like maybe I should do hair like out of the house like everybody else. But um, I also realized that maybe that would be a problem because of where I'm from. Um, people don't, I don't, I don't believe people like Americans here. Like I think, I think there's like a, a subtle hatred towards Americans because they believe that we think we're better than everybody which I can see like Americans when they come here and I see it from like a major perspective Americans we need to work on our, our people skills because we be acting like real bossy and like we the this shit but that's not me you know like I just want to make it like everybody else and um, I, I realized that maybe hair wouldn't be a good thing for me because I didn't know how I would get clients. Being American and light-skinned, here in Barbados, somebody my complexion, they would call white. I ain't really like that because I was like, who white? I ain't white. I'm light-skinned. You know, I got real defensive, but here is like a real serious colorism problem. Like, and it breaks my heart to see it because, like, I believe black is beautiful. Like, there's no shade of black that ain't pretty to me. Like, I was raised by dark-skinned women. So, to me, beauty is beauty. Like, I never would, like, think, oh, the darker you are, the uglier you are. But here, like, brown-skinned, dark-skinned girls be bleaching their skin. And I'd be like, Why? Why? Don't do that. Like, you're so beautiful and you're in a country where everybody looks like you. Like, you should feel, feel more comfortable, but Barbados is not that sort of place. Like, people my complexion and white people, they move different. And because of that, I think that's why the dark skin, brown skin people look at people my complexion and red, with red tones as white. So it kind of broke my heart that it's real serious out here like that, especially when in America, light skins and dark skins and brown skins have all came together and just said we black and we gonna go against racism and colorism and everything that's here to stop us because that's what colorism and racism do. It divides people and it's real divided here. So I had a hard time like trying to think of ways to start a business that would be successful with my obstacles ahead of me. Um, but all in all, I'm adjusted now. It's been almost two years, I think, maybe a year and a half, whatever. It's been a year, but by the time I leave here, it will be two years. And I just want, I want to share my pros and cons of living here like what's worked and what doesn't work what I like and what I don't like so my pros are I love the sun and the beach the ocean here is beautiful it's bright blue crip blue like my cousin like to say and you know when my family comes here we have a good time you know it's good to have them here and, and, and when my friends and stuff come I could I could I really enjoy Barbados but when I don't have them here, it does get a little lonely. Um, I have my husband, so that's cool. Um, but um, Barbados is a good place to heal. I think if you've gone through things in life or just very traumatic like experiences or you're holding on to something in your heart that just won't release, 
come to Barbados. Come and enjoy the sun and the sand because water is very healing. And I've, I've really learned that everything is temporary. This life, this world, constantly moving. You know, you don't stay in the same situation forever. And that's the beauty of it. You know, I've really healed and grown as a woman. And that has been the best thing for me. That is the best. That is why moving here has been the best decision of my life. Um, also, my roots. Um, my father uh, was Bajan, but he was super Americanized. Um, so... He did what all Americans do, you know, go out to eat, buy things, shop, have a nice car, you know, just superficial things. But he struggled internally with his soul. Um, so he actually committed suicide. So I think losing my dad made me realize how important it is to take care of your life and yourself. You know, my mom too, when she died of cancer, I realized, okay, take care of your body. Take care of your body. But when he died, it was like, okay, take care of your soul. Because that took him down, you know? His demons took him down because he was, he, he had lost what was important. He couldn't see that. So moving here and like reattaching to my roots uh, seeing the behaviors he had and people like oh okay so he wasn't crazy I always thought my dad was a little weird but now like being in Barbados he's not weird like he used to fly kites who the fuck does that in, in the states who flies kites who gets up in the morning and, and goes outside to fly a kite but they just fly kites so I see like the little things he used to do I'm like oh okay he's normal um but um I also like Barbados because it's raw you know, the emotions here are raw. People, you see a lot of like behaviors that in America we hide, you know, we're, we're very superficial people. In the States, you know, we, we wanna say everything's mental health. Like, you need to see a therapist for that. And you need to go talk about that with a therapist and stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, but you can also feel the emotions too and kind of like let them out, you know? Like, we're all about healthy minds and stuff, but reactions are very healthy. And I see them here all the time. People are very reactive to each other, you know? There's a lot of affection, a lot of anger, there's a jealousy, envy, adore, admiration, adoration. There's a lot of manipulation. There's all types of human rawness constantly. And you get used to that. And you realize how human we really are. And I, I love that. I love it because I'm, I'm, I'm aware. So I know like when people are doing things, what they really are trying to do. I'm very conscious. I can, I can see through people's ideas and motives. I read through a lot of shit. So I'm just very like, okay, I see what's going on here. You're human. That's what it is. Um, and the food. I love the Caribbean food. Um, there's a lot of rice, flavorful chicken. I love the fish. Um, I got to eat things that I grew up, you know, fish cakes. We used to eat fish cakes for holidays, but now I have fish cakes all the time. So that's great. Um, but when it comes to pizza, tacos, ain't no Mexicans here, man. It ain't the same. It ain't the same. But when it comes to Caribbean food, um, I love Aito food, which is the Rasta food. I love that. It's so good. And we don't have that in the States, so I like that I can get these things. Um, and I really like how kind people are here, you know, despite the little stank-ass attitudes that, that a lot of customer service women have. Like, I always get this, like, weird, like, attitude that I'm like, where the fuck is that coming from? There's a lot of sweet people. Like the girl that does my hair, I love her. She's so sweet. Um, so when I do meet a good soul, it's great. I love when I meet people who are genuine in Barbados because it's rare. Like I said, there's a lot of human behaviors, manipulation. It's also a poor country a little bit, so people do a lot of trickery. and It's just very shady. So when you meet a good person, it really helps brighten the whole idea of the island for you. 
and my cons like i said stank attitudes i get tired of them sometimes like one lady told me i couldn't get a bank account because my marriage certificate was fake and i'm like Bitch, what the fuck are you talking about like i literally got my marriage certificate from the supreme court and she was just like I don't know. you know and i was just like oh my god like you don't even like even stink attitudes can't stand them um it'd be slow a lot of like just things take forever it took me two months to open a bank account two you know how long it take to open a bank account in the states maybe an hour at the most so that was really annoying um everything here takes at least two weeks to get done you just be prepared to be patient which i lack but i have it now <laughs> um there's not really any money like I'm not as I'm not as did up as I used to be. Like I just don't be caring about that stuff no more. I've lost my materialism materialistic nature, which is cool. Um a lot of dishonesty. A lot of people be lying. I don't like liars, but people lie here a lot to get what they want. Don't fuck with that shit at all. Lack of accountability. Nobody wants to be responsible for shit. People want to say, oh, that wasn't me, that wasn't me, that wasn't me, that wasn't me. Like, yes, it was. Like, just admit it. Like, take some account. Like, nobody has accountability. And that just baffles me. You know, these are adults who are pointing the finger. Like, oh, that was you, that wasn't me. You know, and I just be like, in my zen. Um... Like I said, the colorism and racism here is, is fucked up. It's really sad that black people can't come together. Like, I don't see how when it's like 90% black, but I think money has really divided the country too. So, um, but I tell people all the time, listen, I'm light-skinned, okay? I, 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 might, I might be in Barbados, I understand y'all want to call me white, but I'm light-skinned. Both my parents it was not white they parents not white so you gotta get it correct straight and um, a lot of small mindedness like you can't really tell people nothing everybody want to believe what's comfortable you can't really like get people to like open their minds to a different concept it's like once they believe that concept that's it there's no you could literally present facts and they still don't believe it and that should be annoying too but, I mean, it is what it is, you know? This is a small island. Like, there's no reason to conform. There's nobody challenging anybody. Everybody's just living a daily life. And that is the cool part about it. It's just the human experience here. So I definitely recommend you to come here, enjoy vacation. They treat tourists better than they treat locals. So tourists will get, like, you know, love. If you live here, you will get love and probably some hatred. So, but if you're a tough person, strong-minded, you will be fine. You will be totally fine. You just have to walk with a sense of self, determination to accomplish whatever you came here to do, and respect other people, and, and life will be good for you. So, that is me, AAM, all about me. Spliff chant the one song for the Eden That the bad man me can't live with Oh, if you live my life, no boy can't tell me on one big Spliff chant the one song for the Eden That the bad man me can't live with